Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss a video. We are going to be doing some watercolor with Tombow markers and our color palette is by Make the Cards Challenge. Hello, we are making a card for Make the Cards Challenge, but I also wanted to do something that was a little bit different than what I normally do. We're going to watercolor with markers today. We're also going to include a lot of shine with it. I'm going to be using the Mega Succulent stamp by Altenew, and this is our color palette. It is peach, uh, tealy blue, and like a grainy apple green, and a purple lavender color. I'm going to emboss the succulent image on some watercolor paper. I use inexpensive watercolor paper because I, I'm not an artist and for cards it's perfectly fine. I just go and get the cheapest one, whatever's on sale at my big box store or you know whatever. This is Strathmore 400 student series paper I believe and I usually get it in the great big huge um, books and just cut it down to the size that I need. Uh, we're also going to be using some Maker Forte Kaleidoscope Powder. This is Neptune. I'll need a watercolor brush, of course, Versamark ink, and I also have a piece of plastic for a palette over here. What we're going to do is actually scribble the color on the plastic and mix in water with the Maker Forte Kaleidoscope Powder, kind of like you do with Perfect Pearls. And then we're going to pick it up with our water brush and we're going to paint in our uh, colors here. You can also color directly on the watercolor paper with the marker. However, you might not be able to break that pigment up as easily, which is why we're going to tint our water over here on our palette that's mixed with our Maker Forte uh, kaleidoscope powders. I am going to use a stamping platform to stamp this and I'm going to heat emboss that image in gold. So let's get started. Okay first we are going to stamp our image on our watercolor paper. Watercolor paper has a texture to it so we want to make sure that we give it really good pressure especially in the center of that image because it has so much detail in it so that we get a really good impression. So I'm kind of doing the CPR thing. I'm using a Stamparatus as my stamping tool for this and then I'm just going to pick up my watercolor paper and we are going to heat emboss it in gold. If you, it sounds like a little motor is running in the background right now, I have a purring cat sitting in my lap. She's not feeling the best in the world so she wants to be in mom's lap right now. So I apologize if you hear the purring cat in the background. If you get stray embossing powder, just grab a little paintbrush and knock that powder off. It will be fine. I look to make sure that I have, if I have areas that I have missed, I just put pour the bait, baking powder, ah, embossing powder over it and make sure I get those. And then we're going to melt this with our heat tool. I use a kitchen cutting board on, instead of doing this over my mat because I don't want to ruin my mat by warping it from the heat. I make sure that my heat tool is nice and hot. I hold it away from me. I turn it on and about hold it away from me for about 10 seconds. This video is sped up um, to be about 18 minutes total. The entire process took me about an hour. So this video, uh, true time was about an hour. So I had to speed this up uh, so I can make sure that y'all get to see everything. When you're heat embossing and you're melting your paper, make sure that you get all of the areas and it's nice and smooth. If it's still bumpy, you might still have some uh, embossing powder that hasn't melted, so make sure you, you melt that. I didn't tape this down because I wasn't planning on it being uh, super wet or anything like that, so I didn't need to tape this down. Uh, I am using a water brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out a few of these. Uh, sorry. I'm going to scoop out a few of the uh, kaleidoscope powders onto my palette here and I'm going to mix it with some water and then I'm going to scribble my color on a few areas of my watercolor palette and here we're going to go zoom in a little bit and I'm going to start coloring I'm going to play music while I'm coloring because the water coloring because this is going to take a few minutes
and that's going to finish up our water coloring. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I got my color inspiration from Make the Cards Challenge. It's a fairly new challenge blog, started in January, and it has different challenges every single week. So it's like a theme challenge, a color challenge, a sketch challenge, color challenges, which I think I just mentioned, and just use two things uh, on, on a card or a... Um, it's just a bunch of different challenges so it's really cool it's something different every single week we have a great design team so head over and check us out the link will be below this week obviously is a color challenge and i'll have more information on that over on my blog so head over there too uh, for the sentiment on this card to finish it off we're using the kindness and kind uh, die set from honeybee stamps it's getting ready to retire so if you don't have it already go grab it and I am cutting this out three times and I'm going to stack them up. If you've never stacked word die sentiments that are this delicate before, start in the middle. So take your one layer of your sentiment, put your adhesive on it, and then start in the middle of the sentiment. Don't start on the edge with, edge with like a loopy. Start in the middle of it, like line up the I and the N of the kind, word kind. It makes it much easier to align uh, and when I have a delicate sentiment like this I definitely want to give it some more heft if you just use one layer of it it kind of gets lost so you want to make sure that you have uh, some heft behind it so I'm stacking up Highland Heather cardstock to give it that that heft that I want it to have Another way to actually accentuate a dye sentiment like this is to use the color on top that you want and back it in black. It really makes it pop off of the page at that point too. So there's a little tip for you to get better pop from your sentiments when you want to dye, stack them up like this. So I'm finishing up this card with these sentiments and then we are going to uh, stamp and heat emboss in gold. A sentiment from the stamp set itself and I'm going to trim down the panel that we um, watercolored just a shade and pop that on the front of a top folding note card. I hope you enjoy this card and give it a try. If you have any questions about watercoloring with markers and the method that I use today, just drop a comment below and I'll get back with you. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to head over to Make the Cards Challenge as well and join in the fun.